day 25, Genesis 38 through 40. This is just the word where we're reading chronologically through the Bible in a year. Day 25 of 365, Genesis 38 through 40. And it came to pass that time, and it came to pass at that time that Judah departed from his brothers and visited a certain Adulamite whose name was Haran, Hira. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua. And he married her and went into her. So she conceived and bore a son, and he called his name Ur. And she conceived again and bore a son, and she called his name Onan. And she conceived yet again and bore a son and called his name Shelah. He was of, he was at Chezib when she bore him. Then Judah took a wife of Ur, his firstborn, and her name was Tamar. But Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord killed him. And Judah said to Onan, go in to your brother's wife and marry her and raise up an heir to your brother. But Onan knew that the heir would not be his. And it came to pass when he went into his brother's wife that he admitted on the ground, lest he should give an heir to his brother. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord. Therefore, he killed him also. Then Judah said to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, remain a widow in your father's house till my son Shelah is grown. For he said, lest he also die like his brothers. And Tamar went and dwelt in her father's house. Now in the process of time, the daughter of Shua, Judah's wife, died. And Judah was comforted and went up to his sheep shears at Timnah. He and his friend Hira, the Abdulamite. And it was told Tamar, saying, Look, your father-in-law is going up to Timnah to shear his sheep. So she took off her widow's garments, covered herself with the veil, and wrapped herself, and sat in an open place which was on the way to Timnah. For she saw that Sh Shelah had grown, and she was not given to him as a wife. Then Judah saw her. He thought she was a harlot because she had covered her face. Then he turned to her by the way and said, Please let me come into you. For he did not know that she was his daughter in law. So he said, What will you? So she said, What will you give me that you may come into me? And he said, I will send a young goat from the flock. So she said, Will you give me a pledge till you send it? Then he said, what pledge shall I give you? So she said, your signet and cord and your staff that is in your hand. Then he gave it to her and went into her and she conceived by him. So she arose and went away and laid aside her veil and put on the garments of her widowhood. Then Judah sent the young goat by the hand of his friend Abdulamite to receive his pledge from the woman's hand, but he did not find her. Then he asked the man of the place, saying, Where is the harlot who was openly by the roadside? And they said, There was no harlot in this place. So he returned to Judah and said, I cannot find her. Also the men of the place said, There was no harlot in this place. Then Judah said, Let her take them for herself, lest we be ashamed. For I sent this young goat, and you have not found her. And it came to pass about three months later that Judah was told, saying, Tomorrow your daughter-in-law has played the harlot. Furthermore, she is with child by harlotry. So Judah said, Bring her out and let her be burned. When she was brought out, she sent to her father-in-law, saying, By the man to whom these belong, I am with child. And she said, Please determine whose these are, the signet and cord and staff. So Judah acknowledged them and said, she has been more righteous than I, because I did not give her to Sheila, my son, and he never knew her again. And it came to pass at the time of her giving birth that, behold, twins were in her womb. And so it was when she was giving birth that one of them put out his hand and the midwife took 
a scarlet thread and bound it on his hand, saying, This one came out first. Then it happened, as he drew back his hand, that his brother came out unexpectedly. And she said, How did you break through? This breach be upon you. Therefore his name was called Perez. Afterwards his brother came out, who had the scarlet thread on his hand, and his name was called Zerah. Chapter 39. Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, the officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord had made all he did to prosper in his hand. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house and all that he had put under his authority. So it was from the time that he had made him overseer of his house and all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Jacob's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Thus he left all that he had in Joseph, Joseph's hand. And he did not know what he had expected, what he had except for the bread which he ate. Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast longing eyes on Joseph. And she said, lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, look, my master does not know what is with me in the house. And he has committed all that he has to my hand. There is no greater in this house than I, nor has he kept back anything from me but you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? So it was as he spoke to Joseph day by day. So it was as she spoke to Joseph day by day that he did not heed her to lie with her or to be with her. But it happened about this time when Joseph went into the house to do his work and none of the men of the house were inside that she caught him by his garment saying, lie with me. But the but he left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside. And so it was when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and fled outside that she called to the men of the house and spoke to them saying, see, he has brought into us a Hebrew to mock us. He came in to me to lie with me, and I cried out with a loud voice. And it happened when he heard that I lifted my voice and cried out that he left his garment with me and fled and went outside. So she kept his garment with her until his master came home. Then she spoke to him with words like these, saying, The Hebrew servant whom you brought to us came in to me, came in to, me to mock me. So it happened as I lifted my voice and cried out that he left his garment with me and fled outside. So it was when his master heard the words which his wife spoke to him, saying, Your servant did to me after this manner, that he was angry, that his anger was aroused. Then Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were confined. And he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy, and he gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hands all of the prisoners who were in the prison. Whatever they did there, it was his doing. The keeper of the prison did not look into it. That was the keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority because the Lord was with him and whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. Chapter 40. And it came to pass after these things that the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt offended their Lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was angry with his two officers, the chief butler and the chief baker. So he put them in custody in the house of the captain of the guard in the prison, the place where Joseph was confined. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them and he served them. So they were in custody for a while. But the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, who were confined in the prison, had a dream. Both of them, each man's dream in one night and each man's dream with his own interpretation. And Joseph came in to them in the morning and looked at them and saw that they were sad. 
And he asked Pharaoh's officers who were with him in the custody of the Lord's house, saying, Why do you look so sad today? And they said to him, We each have had a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. So Joseph said to him, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell them to me, please. Then the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said to him, Behold, in my dream a vine was before me, and in the vine there and in the vine were three branches. It was as though it budded, its blossoms shot forth, and its clusters brought forth ripe grapes. Then Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup and placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said to him, This is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. Now within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your hand and restore you to your place, and you will put Pharaoh's cup in his hand according to the former manner when you were his butler. But remember me when it is well with you. And please show kindness of me, make mention of me to Pharaoh and get me out of this house. For indeed, I have stolen away from the land of the Hebrews. For indeed, I was stolen away from the land of the Hebrews. And also I have done nothing here that they should put me into the dungeon. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said to Joseph, I also was in my dream, and there were three white baskets on my head. In the uttermost basket were all kinds of baked goods for Pharaoh, and the birds ate them out of the basket on my head. So Joseph answered and said, This is the interpretation of it. The three baskets are three days. Within three days, Pharaoh will lift up your head from you and hang you on a tree, and the birds will eat your flesh from you. Now it came to pass on the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast for all his servants, and he lifted up the head of the chief butler and of the chief baker among his servants. And he restored the chief butler to his butlership again, and he placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker, as Joseph had interpreted to them. Yet the chief butler did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of the word that was day 25 Genesis 38 through 40.